Actors, we've all got issues, so let's talk about them. I'm Juan Yala, and welcome to Actors with Issues. Each week, we bring you interviews with actors from across TV, film, and Broadway, taking many deep dives into their careers and getting into the successes, the struggles, and of course, the issues that they face as actors. That's enough about us. Let's dive into the episode. Today's guest is an actor you've seen in English and Spanish language series, including El Secretario, Narcos, Acapulco, and here to talk with us about their latest role on the Netflix series, Keep Breathing. Please welcome Juan Pablo Espinosa. Juan Pablo, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Gracias. So excited to be here, Juan. Tocayo. <laughs> uh, so before we uh, dive into um, Keep Breathing and to all of the past work, that we always start with a rapid fire question round um, just to get things warmed up. We call it, it's a game we call Getting to Know You. Uh, so we always start with coffee or tea? Both, definitely. But Colombiano, so more coffee, I, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, film or television? Theater. Theater. <laughs> yes. Uh, the next one is stage acting or screen acting. So which of the two? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely stage for me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, drama or comedy? Ooh, I guess drama. Hero yeah. or villain? Um, I, I love a good villain. <laughs> They're always yeah. more fun to do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The older I get, I think I find more juicy stuff in, in the villain. <laughs> yeah. uh, what actors had the biggest influence on you? Oh, for sure. My favorite has always been Goldie Hawn. Um, and Robin Williams, Whoopi Goldberg. It's always that thing. It's funny that you just said a comedy or, or drama because I draw so much of my inspiration from comedy. And uh -huh. these three geniuses I just mentioned, I love. Yeah, and they're all incredible, like dramatic <laughs> actors as well, despite exactly. being mm. hilarious comedians. Yeah. Uh, what I was your them. first non-acting job? I was an usher at a uh, theater in Boston, sitting people in the in the theater. So, I'm I'm really good at it. <laughs> uh, what program movie never fit? Say again. Like program. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, your playbill. Yeah. Uh, what movie never fails to make you laugh? Um, the First Wife's Club. <laughs> and what movie never fails to make you cry? The English Patient. And lastly, describe your most memorable audition in three words. And memorable can mean good or bad. So that's up to you. <laughs> See. Sometimes we, we remember Oof. most the bad ones. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in three words, you said? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say um, trauma, <laughs> frustration, mm. um, and panic. Yeah. Oh. I feel like that happens with uh, when you least yeah. expect it, that panic. I'm an actor as well. So, you know, like that's that yeah, uh, yeah. panic sets in when you, you're just like, I was fine two minutes ago. What happened? Oh my, and the expectations too, you know, you have, you build up, you wait for this, you prepare for this. And then sometimes it's just like, you have a minute if you're lucky. Yeah. And then sometimes they don't even introduce you or they don't even say hi. And it's like, okay, next. And you're like, right. <laughs> I waited a month for this. And it's like, no, no, no. But we're, we're here. We're surviving. We're, you know, right. it's all yeah. about the passion. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I want to go back to the early days of your career. So uh, I know you were born and raised in Colombia, and then you eventually um, went to Emerson in Boston. Yes. Uh, but what was it about the arts that drew you in and made you decide, like, I want to pursue and make this a career? I literally think um, my first visit to New York when I was 10 years old, I, I was still living in Bogota with my family and my parents took us to see Cats on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a child walking into the theater and thinking like, this is so cool. Like the scenery is so big, everything's so oversized. And then having that moment of hearing the orchestra for the first time live and, and the actors in the aisles and the singing and the dancing. And it was something where it's like, what is going on? This is, this is not real life. You're, you're in a universe. That's like the, the feeling I got that day. I was like, I definitely want to become an actor if this is what I can do to people, like transport them, um, then um, it became a thing where 
I think every kid goes through this where you're like, mom, dad, I put on a show. Uh, my parents were so patient with me because every five minutes I'd be like, it's ready. Okay, it's ready. Now you can come see the show. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Otra vez, like, ya vamos. Like, we'll, we'll be there in five minutes. I'm like, you know, we're seating promptly today. Right. Um, but she, they, were, they were so sweet. And, that, and it always gets those creative juices flowing. I think as children, we have so much of our imagination. It's so vivid and, and it, it has um, that ability to transport us. Every five minutes, you're, you're being a superhero. And then the next mm -hmm. thing you're like, this is a castle. This is a volcano. And acting is literally being a child again, where you're like believing what you're creating around you. And trying to be in the moment, and and I think that's the beginning for me. That's where I really decided, like, yeah, this is definitely what I want to do with the rest of my life. Mm. Early on, <laughs> it's, it's funny. So early on for myself, when I saw um, Beauty and the Beast on Broadway, oh. was the first I was like, this is so cool because it always been you know Disney movies, cartoons, and was yeah. never sort of. Um, I just never be as also like I never saw a kid that looked like me in a movie or on TV when I was younger. So I never thought like that would be what it was. But then seeing that show on Broadway, everyone's in makeup, these full costumes, it's just insane. like with cats. You're like, yeah, that yeah. person's just like a giant cat. They're not even like a literally. Person. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful interpretation too with that show. Particularly, uh, it makes all the sense in the world. I think we grew up with a film as children mm -hmm. and to go to the theater and you're like, it's Lumiere right there, you know, yeah. and and the the magic that that show has with the scenery and the big number it's it's literally being in the movie yeah. so i i can imagine that that also is so inspiring as a as a child too. yeah yeah and especially being in uh in a latino family like i had a huge extended family so whenever i did see <laughs> all of my cousins it's like you have all these people to play with but then it's just me and my sister at home so then you have to find a way like you said, to get those like create creative juices going, whether yeah. it was like, music or just making up shows and torturing our parents, uh, <laughs> like you said, <laughs> torture. Yes, but um, I love the fact that when you bring up the the fact that we come from Latino backgrounds, like these families where um, we grew up not going to the theater and feeling like we're represented or or on screen or on TV shows, a lot of times we we were so thirsty for that representation, you know, and, and it's funny that we both mentioned shows that, you know, one is about cats and the other one is about uh, dancing dishes and a candle. Yes, literally, right? <laughs> Where it really gives you the, the possibility to be anybody, anything. Yeah. So it's funny that we, we felt identified with these shows, but right. yeah, I love it. And uh, you've been in this industry for for quite some time and working in it throughout different sort of parts of the industry in, in Los Angeles, yeah. New York City and in Colombia. So what have you noticed has changed about the industry from those earlier days compared to now? It's crazy when you realize how when I first started, it was all about theater for me. Uh, in the sense of that's where you turn for the discipline. That's where you turn for your tools. So it was so important to me to try to look for the best training. Um, and everybody agreed that it was on stage. That's where the, um, the most discipline would come from. And I remember going to Emerson and even in Colombia, like getting involved with my, my, my teachers there. Um, there was this sense of discipline. Right. There was always a sense of repetition. There was the sense of building your tools. And I think the biggest difference that I'm noticing nowadays is that, especially here in L.A., there's a huge thirst to become famous, to become noticeable. And which is fine. I respect that. If you want to do that, that's great. But there's less a sense of a discipline and less a sense of a craft. Um, so even that's translating to a lot of the auditions too. I think a lot of casting directors are waiting for you to be the part. So this cliche of like, we don't even know what we're looking for until it walks in the room. But a lot of times it's like, well, I grew up in an industry where I was taught to try to be as moldable as possible to try to be 
to work to be the best actor in taking direction, you know? Mm -hmm. So now with the self tapes and, and all this new way of being an actor, it's very hard for you to actually get a little bit of direction. So even if you are a great actor and you have the great ability to play the part that they're looking for, if you're not the part from the, you know, if you walk into that room, if you, as, as soon as they play that tape, they don't see, aha, it's hard. And, and it's weird for me because it's a lot of the more naturalistic elements of it where they're like, he wasn't even an actor, you know, like he started acting with this movie and you're like, wow. Like, yeah. Uh, Cause I don't see surgeons walking into the surgery room and being like, I just thought it'd be fun. You know, right. it's like, there's a craft, there's, there's a discipline and, and I miss that. Yeah. And especially, uh, like you said, coming from theater uh, where you're told you can do anything because it's makeup and lighting and imagination and all of that. And then going to a medium that it is so specific, oh, uh, especially now, even though the industry is more diverse and open to representation, sometimes they're like, you know, authentic Mexican accents. I'm like, well, I'm Salvadorian and I'm born American. So I don't, my <laughs> Spanish is neutral. I don't have an accent at all. <laughs> You know, so then it's like, how do I have to learn accents in Spanish now, not just English? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's it's, it, it's so much to juggle now. I, I agree a thousand times. Um, one of the most beautiful things that I got to experience at, in school is that you're you're learning about Chekhov, you're learning about Shakespeare, you're you're learning all these beautiful things, and there were no limits, you know. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you're playing Romeo, and you're playing. Uh, Hamlet and Macbeth and I remember a very specific moment where I got the the part of Richard II in this wonderful production in school I was so excited and and as a Colombian having English being my second language and now trying to do it in Elizabethan style and wondering what these words were sometimes um it was it was a really cool moment to be like hey I can be the king of England you know, and now in the real world, it's like, ha, you'll never be Richard the <laughs> second, you know, and, and, and the possibility that we could have been everything and anything and trying to find that balance between representation and what you were saying, it's, um, it's hard sometimes to come to terms with, okay, until the next 40 year old Latino Colombiano who lives in LA, who has long hair part comes along. I won't be working and mm -hmm. it was never meant to be that way i think it's yeah. it, there's got to be a little give and take yeah and it's, it's constantly evolving um yeah. you know even from the 10 years that i've been doing this it's just seeing these little changes and but then you're comparing you know from back then to now it just it's like it just feels like a whole new world like streaming didn't exist when i started acting just there was literally. no streaming. It was just <laughs> yes. broadcast TV. You wanted to be on NBC or, you know, Fox Yeah, that or... was a dream come true. Yes. Yeah. Now it's like it's younger funny. actors don't even watch broadcast TV. They're, you know, it's. I, yeah. I had a funny moment about that because um, I was talking to a friend with the release of Keep Breathing. Um, they're like, are you psyched? Or like, you have like the number one show on Netflix. And it's huge and I'm so excited and, and I'm very grateful, but it's still funny that like streaming is such a thing, you know, like what you just said, we aspired mm -hmm. to having a show on Broadway. We aspired to having a blockbuster movie. We aspire to all these things and streaming has made it so, so immediate too. like the numbers and every day there's new content and every day there's a new show and every day. So that's part of like the disposable aspect of it too. But, trying to grasp on what streaming is for me like it's it's still like i feel so old when i say that but <laughs> it really is like oh yes yes number one on netflix this is so exciting and it is really exciting and i'm very grateful mm -hmm. but there's still a part of me in in the back of my mind that i'm like what does that mean come again <laughs> like okay yes we're very excited right it's a different Especially world too. Especially with, with streaming uh, being so many like limited series, like, okay, number one, does that mean we get season two? Uh, yes, what does right. that mean? Uh, you know, just like all <laughs> of these. Something tangible, um, please. See. Right. And it, it's funny, uh, we have a, a connection. Um, mm -hmm. I worked on Martin Garrow's last show, Blind Spot. Oh, no way. Uh, yeah, so, so cool. he, yeah. I, I did like four episodes and, and he was, uh, Martin oh, actually directed yeah. me in the finale. Um, 
such a wonderful Come guy. Him and Brendan, like one. such a great crew. And yeah, it's such a great. I'm group. so grateful for them. I I mean, probably you got to experience this also firsthand. Um, I keep telling everybody like you don't understand how they write, how they direct, how they produce. Um, I remember getting the the script for Keep Breathing and the first one and starting to read. And I'm like, this should be a play. This should be a book. The stage directions I'm reading are so detailed and so beautiful that, I mean, I'm going to make this up, but it was something along the lines of, you know, our main character, Liv, she opens her eyes and is amazed at the vast beauty that surrounds her. But then it hits her. It's beautiful, but it's terrifying. She's alone. She's alone in the universe like a baby mm. who's newborn. Blah, blah, blah. She turns to her right only to realize it's all too real and she's starting to feel hungry. You know, whatever. And it translates into the screen of a shot of Melissa opening her eyes and turning to, to the left. Yeah. But <laughs> I wish Netflix had the subtitles of what the, you know, stage directions were or mm. in the script too because it's so beautifully written. These people are yeah. so talented. I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. And, and so perfectly segueing into that, um, for the folks uh, listening or watching who haven't seen the show yet, go watch it. First of all, we might get into spoilers. So there's your warning. Uh, so uh, keep breathing <laughs> is this, it is a survival drama, but it is also like a character driven drama. And these flashbacks are so vivid and world bending and, you know, she's weaving in and out of like different ages. We see your character age. And then when he's, uh, when he's like a young father and, um, you know, and you got to work with Florencia Lozano, who I've interviewed in the past as well. Uh, and, oh, you know, we love Florencia. Yeah. And uh, Liv, uh, who's played by Melissa Barrera, uh, she is sort of reminiscing so many parts of her life, relationships, her mother leaving her, her father getting sick or, or, or passing away yes. and um, and her parts of her career. So, you know, dealing with so much. Uh, of a passage of time going back and forth. Was that like the most challenging part of your role or was it something else that you would say is like the most challenging part? I think that's definitely one of the most challenging things, especially like, you know, in TV, it's not shot chronologically. Mm. So it was hard sometimes even for all of us. I remember with Florencia <laughs> sitting down and being like, wait, 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 let's try to make a timeline because the flashbacks are like, okay, so we got to find the beginning and, and start like untangling this because there had to be a moment where our characters were happy and you know they couples they come together for a reason and we start on on these two characters already in a really bad point in the relationship mm -hmm. so so that's always a trickiest no and then like you mentioned then you're aging 25 years into the future so it's like untangle that <laughs> <laughs> you know where it's like wait okay but it only what i found too as challenging as it is it's so beautiful because creating the bond for example with melissa mm -hmm. was so beautiful when you get to be you know flash forward to like 25 years ahead and then be in the makeup trailer and form that you know friendship and then going back and forth where a lot of times you don't get that experience to to really cement a kind of relationship when this character is young and bring it till the end so it was really nice to to have all that information already but it's definitely challenging especially like uh the makeup and and all these things that you know i think a lot of us for many years we we wish especially in my case i wish oh i want a role where I, where I can age, you know, where I can mm -hmm. take this character and and bring it into the future and be careful what you wish for. Right. <laughs> Next thing you know, <laughs> you're in the makeup chair for three, Literally. four hours. <laughs> they're putting four prosthetics hours, like, on and yes. all that. And you're like, wow, I should have. <laughs> yeah. And it's also yeah. like funny for, for everybody hearing us. Or, um, I think it's funny that in theory, it's super exciting, right? And then you start uh, deconstructing what actually is going to happen at that moment. And it's like, okay, you're called at 4 a.m. to be in the makeup <laughs> chair. Then at 8, 8 a.m., as you're covered in prosthetics and, and, and all these beautiful things that they're artists, what they, they accomplish, then you're ready to step into somebody 
you know, way older than you. Mm-hmm. Your breathing has to change. Your voice has to change. Everything starts morphing and changing. And um, you get on set and it's long hours of lighting and, and all this. And the makeup starts to. So all of a sudden it's like you can't even drink water or or have a snack because the so many things come into place. But at the end, the, the funniest thing is like, oh, yeah, I'm here to act like mm-hmm. all of this preparation and it takes 12 hours to get to that point where you're like oh yeah and rolling you know like right. this is the moment where you 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 get to do what you're supposed to be doing so yeah. it, it's so magical that it literally when i see it on screen too sometimes i'm like wow those 15 seconds took us 48 hours to do <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like it's yeah. it's a lot of, of beautiful work behind it yeah it's I feel like people still don't realize how long it takes to to work on film or television, like even for a, a show like, you know, Law and Order that's been on the air forever. It's still eight to ten days for a one hour episode. People don't realize it's it takes insane. so long. And it's so beautiful too. like while we're comparing mediums too. like on stage. I think it's it's very clear when you're like, OK, we're going to rehearse for a month, three months, six, whatever the production is. And then. Um, you have a script, uh, um, a play that's probably like two hours. So you know you're you're constantly going back to the same scenes. You're constantly going back to the. That's the the beauty of repetition, no? Mm-hmm. Um, and to have everything so clear, and then you have the live audience, and there's like no take two, no. You know you're in the moment, but then you get to these productions where it's like six episodes shot in four months. And it's the luxury of time and the luxury of this. But at the same time, it's a lot of time, a lot of work to create something that people are binge watching. And I am so grateful that they are. And a lot of people are like, oh, wow, when, how long did this take to, to shoot? And you're like, four months. I'm like, and you watched it. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you finished a, a bag of cookies. Well, <laughs> seeing this, like, it's like, Yep, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of work, but it's beautiful. It's it's that's what it's all about at the end, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you know, as performers, we want to m- try to make it as easy uh, to look as easy as possible and effortless, and that it flows. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't want to keep you for too too long. Um, so no, before I'm... we go, we always uh, wrap up with a, a, f- a final game called "Now That We Know You." Since we've gotten to chat, oh, that's so cool uh, for some time. Uh, so uh, fill in the blank. If I weren't working in the arts, I'd be. Ooh, um, that's a tricky one. Because I was gonna say photographer, painter, but then it's like, <laughs> uh, I guess I'd be a really, really, really mediocre business man, <laughs> <laughs> like unhappy businessman. <laughs> <laughs> uh what role have you had the most fun playing oof um i mean this opportunity with keep breathing has been so much fun like mm-hmm. i said to be able um i also think um every time i think about musical theater and i think billy flynn in chicago that was so much fun uh what is the best advice that you've ever gotten Ooh. um I think become the person that you needed when you were a child, when you were growing up. Mm. I think that's beautiful advice. It's like try to live your life being that person that you needed when you were growing up. And uh, similarly, what is the worst advice you've ever gotten? Ooh, um, I think back in the day when I was graduating high school, where it was like, you know, find something that will give you a lot of money you know like don't waste your time in in arts like go try to be a doctor go try to be a lawyer that was like the worst advice i could have get, mm. uh, received at that point it's like oh okay so here we are with all the pressure of being a teenager and it's like already make sure you make a lot of money for the rest of your life and it's like right. oh um sure no pressure no 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 so that's the worst advice i've ever done and uh, lastly, in 10 words or less, what advice would you give to a young actor? Ooh, um, I'd say believe 
that everything is possible and keep showing up you know mm. there's there's definitely that sense of i think when people introduce failure into the equation it's like fear so it's like what if this doesn't go oh and if i don't but you're already failing at, at just having that thought so right. for, for me it's always like well there's no option it's one way success or success and if success means getting an audition if success means reading a script that you love even if it, you just downloaded it from the internet and you're reading you know beauty and the beast you're you're reading mm -hmm. whatever it is whatever makes you happy and the, but always like i think believe that everything is possible yeah absolutely well juan pablo thank you so much for for taking the time juan, to chat with us the same and uh, if anyone wants to give you a follow on uh, instagram or anywhere on social media where can they yes. find yes they can find me at at espinosa with an s espinosa juanpa it's juanpa, <laughs> juanpa like juan pablo so yep. it's at espinosa juanpa Awesome. And folks, as always, you can follow us on Instagram at Actors with Issues. Give me a follow at Juaniala Official and be sure to check out our YouTube channel to watch new episodes every Monday with bonus episodes on Thursdays or listen as a podcast wherever you get your podcast. Don't miss Keep Breathing streaming now on Netflix. I'm Juaniala. This is Actors with Issues and we'll see you next week.